Here comes the corner. Araujo! 2 0! The noise that's been made is in the Aki Williams coming to the goalkeeper's lost it. What a remarkable clearance that was off the line from Araujo. During his time with Barcelona B, Ronald Araujo had a note hanging over his bedside that read, You are going to be the best center back in Europe. At 24 years old, he is already quickly on his way to achieving that goal, having received a 1 billion euro release clause at Barcelona. But how did he become one of the best center backs in the world? And where will he go from there? Thank you to Classic Football Shirts for sponsoring this video. Use our code RL10 at checkout for 10% off any purchase. And if you do so using our link in the description, we will get a small kickback from every purchase made. Araujo's path to success is very similar to a lot of players, but has a few key differences that has helped him become the player that he is today. In his hometown, Araujo had been playing against adults since he was at least 13. And from them, he learned that there would never be any messing around. So he learned to adapt to the merciless style of play that he experienced as a kid. And you can absolutely see traces of that in his play today. Growing up, he would play for his hometown club until he was 17 years old, when he would move to Montevideo to play for Rentistas, where he would, get this, play center back for the very first time, 17 years into his footballing journey. Maybe that's why he's so decent in the air today. However, one of the biggest curiosities about Araujo's upbringing is that his family always put school ahead of football. His parents refused to let him play unless he received good grades and even shut down a move to Boca Juniors when he was young because they wanted him to have his priorities a certain way a way that many families around the world don't have them. For poor kids with footballing talent around the world, be them from Uruguay, Mali, or Brazil, they can have a lot of pressure put on them by their parents to succeed and help pull their family out of poverty. Well, Araujo, even though his family wasn't exactly well off, was relieved of that burden because his parents did not give him pressure to succeed as a footballer. It even got to the point where Ronald thought his opportunities had passed him by, but his mother assured him that if it was his goal to become a professional footballer, he would be one. And well, she was right. After a few years of whirlwind football in South America, Araujo fended off offers from Madrid, Villarreal, and Atleti to join Barcelona B. And as you can imagine, that football that he became so accustomed to in Uruguay was about as foreign as it possibly could have been from what he would see at La Masia. Before Barcelona, he had never needed to play with the ball as a defender. He learned that either his keeper would boot the ball away or the center backs would receive the pass and the burden of the boot now belonged to them. There was no playing out from the back. It was just mayhem. But now he had decided to join one of the teams that plays out from the back the most in the world. So he either had to adapt or leave. In an interview with The Guardian, Araujo said about his coming to La Masia, the first few sessions, there would be 20 players in a small space and I would touch it three times and lose it three times. But Araujo forced himself to work hard so he could change that because he told himself that he had to play there. He purchased a cheap Barcelona branded ball from the market outside the Camp Nou, took it home, and every day after training, he would, just like most football fans around the world, grab that ball and dribble and pass his way around his tiny space, rewire his muscle memory to become a more calm and composed player on the ball, just like all the best Barcelona defenders. But even though he may not have been the best with the ball at his feet, his intimidating build, confidence, and hunger set him apart from basically anyone else at the club. He also craved criticism because it gave him a goal, something to focus on each time he played that would bring him one step closer to being what he had written on his wall as a 19 year old with Barcelona B, becoming the best center back in the world. <laughs> es un para mí un referente ahí arriba porque eh, la calidad que tiene con el balón y, y cómo se posiciona porque no es no es un central muy rápido pero siempre está bien ubicado y creo que hay, son cosas que me faltan a mí que no miro a él After just one year with Barca B continuing a trend of never spending too much time with one squad he made his debut for Barcelona in a 4-0 demolition of Sevilla on the 6th of October 2019 where he would get his name on the score sheet not for scoring but for receiving a red card 15 minutes into his first team debut 
with Barcelona. It's safe to say that that South American flair, that powerful mentality was still a huge part of his game, no matter how hard he tried to assimilate himself to the Barcelona way. However, it's precisely that difference that made Araujo so great and so immediately impactful for the club. The 2019 Barcelona squad did not need a tidy ball playing defender. They needed someone who knew how to fight, be physical, and go all in on plays like Carlos Puyol and Javier Mascherano had done the years before. They already had an aging PK who, if he was good at anything besides winning the ball in the air, was prolific at playing the ball out from the back. But he was not nearly as good at defending on the back foot and covering space anymore. And that's why the young duo of Todibo and Araujo were given the chance with the first team. However, though the excitement around Toribo's name was high, he never impressed, partially because it seems like his best attributes were not what Barcelona needed, his ball playing ability. They still had Lenglet and Piquet, so the problem they needed to address now was the lack of an energy and athletic ability from their center back pairing, something that Araujo filled perfectly. Sure, in his first season, he looked incredibly clunky on the ball, something that today you can't exactly say he's fully addressed. But he made up for that in ways that no one else in that squad could. Not Piquet, not Lenglet, not Toribo, and not Omtiti anymore. What Araujo brought to the squad was something that La Masia struggles today to show in their products because the qualities they teach Ball security, retention, and hyper footballing intelligence tends to favor more nimble, highly technical defenders rather than pure athletes. The way of Barcelona did not foster players that were really, really good athletically and only did so if they were really good as well at the technical side of the game. That's why Puyol made it through. But Barca managers did not immediately put much confidence into Araujo because of his ball playing ability, framing him as the third or fourth center back in his first year, until Ronald Koeman took charge in August 2020, often playing him as a starter, sometimes as a substitute in every single match that Araujo was available for. Available for being the key term here because Araujo would not be available for many matches because his tough and fiery way of play would finally catch up with him through injury. Starting in October 2020, Araujo has been hit with a plague of injuries that still haunt him to this day and often come at one of the most detrimental points in Barcelona's season. And it's a big mistake from that man, not knowing what's behind him, deeper than everybody else, the only player in the penalty area. I see it, just watching the man, he doesn't pay any attention. It's another three goal defeat on their own round for Barcelona in Europe. From October 29th, 2020 to September 22nd, 2023, Araujo has missed a total of 73 matches for club and country. Funnily enough, the exact same amount of matches that Pedri played during the season that sparked his injury debacle. With all these injuries, one may be worried about how a player can come back from it because oftentimes, Sometimes for Barcelona, players don't come back as the same player they were before. But Araujo was never like that. He continually comes back a better player than he was prior to each one of his injuries. Despite the time laid up or with the physios away from the team, Araujo made sure to always come back prepared. And a lot of this has to do with his obsessive preparation for football. For Araujo, football was always put second and school was put first. So football was only a hobby and never a job. There was no outward pressure on him to perform, so he made it his hobby, his obsession, his way to escape his pressure from school. And I believe having your priorities set like that at such a young age creates this mentality that he wants to get in as much football as possible now to make up for time that he missed out on when he was young. His studying after hours today, constantly watching matches even when his wife is upset with him because he is glued to the TV screen, is his way of making up for lost time. He makes sure that he can be as ready as possible for whatever arises, and in those few moments that he may not have been ready, he has the athletic capacity to make up for it. It's like Araujo has the tenacity and power of Puyo with the physique of Maldini, and shall I say the attacking ability of Ramos? Maybe it's a bit too early to say that he has all of these in his arsenal already, but the potential is there and he gives himself the best opportunity at unlocking that potential with his obsession for football off of the pitch. But no matter how well he is performing, I don't believe that he gets all of the recognition that he deserves, especially by the English media. 
Maybe it's because of his injuries, or maybe it's that Barcelona have not been good in recent years. But for some reason, he seems to be in the shadows compared to many other high-performing center backs today. Virgil van Dijk, William Saliba, Kinmin Jay, Ruben Diaz, they are all on the top of the lists of most English outlets as the best center backs in the world right now. And Araujo rarely gets a solid mention. But that's upsetting to me not only as a Barca fan, but also an English speaker. And that's part of the reason this story needed to be told. However, there's something that's been arising recently that is beginning to push and push Araujo's quality into the shadows even further. Xavi's tactics. This season, Xavi has been consistently playing Araujo out on the right. I believe because over the summer he promised Kunde that he would not have to play as a right back anymore because he didn't want to, and Xavi wanting to make everybody happy obliged. The only problem is Araujo is better than Kunde at center back. Araujo's very decent at right back, but he's just, he doesn't have the quality on the ball. That's what happens when you don't play for 17 years with the ball. You're not going to be as good as Koundé, who was brought up in France and Spain and taught how to play with the ball from a young age. It just won't be the same for a very long time, maybe ever. But Araujo's quality as that central center back is unparalleled by anyone in that Barcelona squad. However, if Xavi continues to force Araujo out on the right, he's going to be more and more forgotten by all of these outlets. However, we saw in the Atleti versus Barca match that when Xavi reverted back to the same lineup that he used last year with three center backs and Koundé out on the right, Araujo is incredible in the middle, and Koundé is very good on the right as well, and it brings out the best in both of them. And so hopefully that's where it stays so Araujo can retake his crown as one of the most promising center backs in the world, at least in the media that I'm able to listen to as only an English speaker. But if you enjoyed this video, why don't you jump on over to this video, which is all about the season that basically poisoned Pedri and ruined him into this injury mess that he sees today. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.